netask. That's a Hebrew word I kind of want you to pick up on a little bit today. It means victory or it means conquer. But it means also, in the kind of the etymology of it, to see a light that you're going to make in a far distance. Meaning we've got a ways to go. But the light's already has been lit. The light is burning. And it lights our way to it. God has already conquered the world. We have the victory in that. And certainly uh, his word documents that. And sometimes we overlook it. We let our own personal puny, I'm going to even say puny, little problems overshadow that bright light in the distance. Let me tell you something. When it comes to acquiring the victory, it's not possible for a mortal. It always takes divine influence. And if you're having trouble in your life, you'd better remember that little motto. When it comes to achieving victory, and I'm speaking in a spiritual sense, it's impossible for a mortal. That means a flesh man. It takes a divine influence from Almighty God. And if you cut yourself off from that, you're in a heap of hurt. You miss the victory, you miss the conquering, and you're going to slave to flesh all your life. So there have, must come that time when spiritually you rise above your puny little problems. And sometimes they can be pretty big. But God can handle about anything. He's in control. He's in charge. Listen to me. He has conquered this world. You as his child have every right to cut your own wake and claim what is yours, that is to say, spiritually speaking and otherwise. His promises, have you claimed them? You know, if you don't claim them, sorry, Charlie. Better luck next time. Because he's asked you to. He's asked you to follow him. And if he conquers the world, it's just, let's use just a little example here. Netesk. He let the children wander through that wilderness straight through and he was ready for them to enter the promised land. But oh no, they heard rumors that there were giants out there. And God had already promised, I've conquered it. It's yours. And in truth he had. We find that out from scripture. So don't, don't be like those in that wilderness and let your own flesh be Question, that God has conquered Satan. He only allows Satan to do what you allow him to do in your personal life. Because he has given you power and authority over that, all of your enemies. So it's yours for the taking, to conquer. That's our subject today. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 25. We're going to go to the Old Testament, and we'll uh, simply pick up on it. Again, remember, victory cannot be achieved by mortals. Only divine power can bring it about. He has already done that. He accomplished his part. It's yours to claim. Chapter 5, the great book of Isaiah. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads, O Lord, Thou art my God. I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. You've done wonderful deeds. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. I don't know, have you partaken of those counsels? He is your counselor. And I'm going to tell you something, you can't buy as wise a counseling on this earth as you will find right here from your Father in heaven. He advises us, leads us, guides us, directs us. If, if you partake of it. And uh, verse 2. For thou hast made of a city an heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Speaking of... Babylon in the future is not going to come to pass. Why? We've got the victory. God has conquered this world. 
He has the victory over this world. And if you follow him, so do you. Verse 3, Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of terrible nations shall fear thee. The ruthless, ungodly peoples will fear God, and they should. But why would it say, the strong people glorify thee? That's so contrary to what they usually say about Christians. You must be humble. Only that means before God, not the world. You should always be humble, but don't let it kick you. Don't let it rule you. You must be strong. You know, this word uh, in the Hebrew is az, as, and it means to be terribly strong. I, I would rather translate it probably to, to the English ear in this generation as to um, be zealous in the Lord. Be strong in your faith. Be strong in your belief and be strong in your actions. You might look at old Paul. He sure wasn't a, a wimp. Even before he was converted to Christianity, he persecuted the church in a big, bad way. Why? He was a zealous individual. He was strong in his faith and in his belief, even though he was wrong. But when he was converted, he was just as zealous for the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, you might get a little profile shot there of what God expects from you. You know, I don't let people talk too much about Christians in front of me. I don't care if I'm down here on the streets or in some other town or anything else. If somebody gets a little too sassy about Christians, they're going to deal with this man. Because you must be strong in your faith. Now, you know, you don't be foolish all at the same time, understand? You use common sense. But the only way people can respect God is to be familiar with Him and His servants. And if you are a servant, you are to be strong in Him. If you read for one minute that I'm saying you should be a troublemaker, you're missing the whole nine yards, okay? You're way out of it. Wisdom and strength go hand in hand. And a wise person uses power and authority and faith in an adequate way for the moment. Again, knowing the motto I told you, to conquer cannot be accomplished by a mortal. It takes divine participation within it to make it happen. So anytime you move, be strong in God, but know it's God that's really doing it. He's, he's watching over. He's got his hand on you. Got his eye on you. And you have faith in him. That's what faith is about. Be strong. Don't be a wimp. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to be nice. Okay? Verse 4. For thou hast been a strength to the poor. Do you realize that the poor, that's to say the... The underdog of the world, do you realize that they are drawn to strength? That makes them seek out what you have. That is to say, uh, fellowship with Almighty God. A strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Who is your wall? God is your wall. Ezekiel chapter 38 documents that. You have a wall between you and the world, and he's already conquered it. So your faith should be strong. Again, always using common sense, of course. Verse 5. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers. It's going to end. As the heat in a, a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud... The branch, or probably would be better translated, the song of the terrible ones shall be brought low. They're not going to have anything to sing about. They're not going to have anything to celebrate. Their standard or slogans, or they're not going to be crying them out because they will know that they are wrong if they're not in the divine uh, guidance of Almighty God. Verse 6, 
And in this mountain, that happens to be Mount Zion, shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. Do you know what that feast is? We partake of it every Passover. And it is that wine that's the best on the leaves. That's the best there is. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is the feast of feast. The feast that gives you that strength, that assuredness when you partake of Holy Communion. His body was that bread. His body took the stripes. You get the healing. Why? God loves you. He took the licks for you. So follow Him and enjoy peace of mind even in this troubled world. Verse 7, And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. How many people? Part of the people? All people. And the veil that is spread over all nations. What is that? You've read of it. You've studied it. You're familiar with it. It's in Ezekiel chapter 13. Where he said, Woe to the daughters of my people that sow pillowcases to cover over my outstretched saving arms with their teaching my people to fly to save their souls. Rapture doctrine. I'm here to save them the way they should be saved. I'm going to rip that covering from the minds and the eyes of the people and let them see truth. Uh, that I am their father, I have overcome, I have conquered this world. Say, well, why is God letting this just go on? Well, the children that are being born today have every right that you do to accept Christ as their savior or decide to follow Satan. They're your brothers, your sisters, even though they may be babes. God knows what he's doing. And that's what this earth age is about is deciding who you're going to love. Your father that has made it so easy for you? Or you can go the way of the world. A lot of people do. It's the hard way because you end up in very bad shape. I don't have to go any further into explanation. The victory, the conquering, cannot, I repeat, cannot be accomplished by a mortal. Only divine power can bring it about and a person that is wise enough to understand that. Let me give you a little example before we take the next verse. Don't be one of these people that said, oh, stand aside, God. I know, how to, I know how to handle this all by myself. I can do it. I know better than you do, God. I know I just want to try it this way. Well, hey, he'll let you go ahead. All right? And you know what you're going to do? You're going to fall flat on your face if it has to do with spiritual. I'm going to let my spirit, I am so wise and I'm so good at what I do. I can convince this person without God's help. I know God said to do it this way. I'd rather do it my way. Okay? Well, fall on your face. How many times do you have to get up before you finally realize your Father must be working through you. You must be in Him, and He must be in you. And that is exercised by the counsel that you seek and receive from Him when you study His Word, the letter He has written to you personally, telling you how to make these things work properly, where you can be successful. That is to say, ultimately find peace of mind. Verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory. There's that word. Okay? Ah, that means to see that light way off in the tunnel. You may have to wait for it a ways. I like that. It lets us understand that our Father, it's done. It's signed. It's sealed. We're going to destroy all evil before it's over. But he has, 
He has already, he will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall be he take away from off all the earth. How much of it? All the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. He has spoken and it is so. The divine word of God is. I will clean up this mess. And he shall. Make sure that someone doesn't put the covering over your eyes by traditions of men. For when Christ died on the cross, the very thing that happened is that veil ripped, not from the bottom to the top of the Holy of Holies, but from the top to the bottom where he could say to you, my child, come on in. I love you. Don't want a bunch of malarkey that you have to go through to get to me. It's open. I paid the price. You're my child. Come in. So don't let traditions of men blind you. Anytime someone teaches you a Christ man doctrine, that's to say Christian doctrine, when you claim to be a Christ person, a person that has faith in Christ, and they're putting chains upon you, binders, they're fake. The truth sets you free. It gives you peace of mind, even in this troubled world today, whereby you can function and be the child of God that you're supposed to be and be successful with the arts and gifts and talents that God has given you, whereby they can blossom with God's presence, not mortally only, that won't work. Your gifts and your talents and your art with just your hand is dead, would, but with divine help, with divine given right. You know, the word gift is charisma. Do you have charisma? Well, if you have a gift of God, you do. That's what the word gift means in the Greek tongue. So if God gave it to you, it's a gift that can't help prospering, can't help being successful. When what? Mortal can't do it by themselves when Almighty God's divine intervention is within it. It can't lose. Why? He's already conquered the world. Verse, so the word victory that you have in that eighth verse is why we came here. That is your Hebrew word that means um, that very thing. It means to conquer. And it means that light that is off in the distance. Do you know that that's all a good person needs? Now a wimp might say, oh Lord, that light's a long way over there, and I'm tired. And I'll tell you, this old Marine Sergeant would tell you, get up off your duffel bag before you get a 13 where it's supposed to be, and march toward that light. You can make another hill always. I don't like wimps. I really don't. Because you know what? God can't use them until they get their act together. But hey, you can shape them up by setting the example. That's all they need is to see how to be prosperous in spirit, in faith, and to be blessed and used of Almighty God, whereby you, with divine encouragement, conquer. Satan runs, dragon runs, and evil spirits run when a true man, woman, or child of God walks into a room. They tremble, they quake. Why? God has already conquered this world. How are you doing? Verse 9, and it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. Are you going to wait for the true father or are you going to slough off to the false messiah? Those little old armpits that have been sewed up whereby you can't see the real truth of God's word of flyaway doctrine. Do you know what God said about that flyaway doctrine in Ezekiel um, uh, 13? I believe it's along about verse um, 20. We'll just say 20. He said, I'm against it. I don't like it. And I'm going to rip it out of their hearts, out of the mind, which is to say minds properly translated. 
uh, wait for the true Father. This is the Lord we have waited for. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Do you know why? There is no other. There is no other. And this isn't something way down the road that you must start the journey. You start the journey when you begin it, when you accepted him, when your faith began to build in him, you're on that journey toward that light, which is the end of the tunnel. You're going to make it. It's going to happen right here on earth. And you're going to be ready, willing, and able. Why? God, your father, has already conquered it. He's destroyed death. Do you want to know who death is? Have you ever read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14? Christ came to this earth, died on the cross, whereby he could destroy death, which is to say the devil. He's got him whipped. It's just when the time is right. Watch that old devil shake his head and fall in the lake. He's done. All right, the two-edged sword clips him. All right, and you can make of that as you please. Verse 10. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. You know what Moab of his own father did to our people. And, you know, um, I, he is brought into this for those that uh, are really the children of God. I'll say it that way. All people are. People that especially should know better, but won't yield to God. It's amazing. Let's just keep going a few verses here. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. What song is that? We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. What is that city? It's the new city. God will bring it with him. As Jesus, when he left the streets of Jerusalem that time, and they said, look at these buildings, would you, Jesus? He said, don't worry about them. There won't be one stone left standing atop another when I return on the Mount of Olives. It's going to be cleansed for that new city. That's one of the signs of the end. Verse 2, open ye the gates that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. What's the ticket to get in there? To keep the truth and to be right about it. Sometimes it may make you look a little funny being right, but always be right. Okay? There might be someone try to get you to agree some, with something that's very wrong, and you might say, well, it'll be easier to agree with them than to say something. And sometimes it is wiser if they're too far gone. But don't, don't be a... a a soggy old noodle that bends any way the flow runs, all right? You're a child of God, act like it. Uh, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Is your mind stayed on him, or can you be bargained with? Hey, old Satan's going to come along to you. Boy, have I got a deal for you. Ooh. And you know what else Satan will say? Because you're so intelligent, handsome, good-looking, pretty woman. Boy, have I got a deal for you. Satan's number one MO, method of operation, is to brag about some, some point you, that you take great pride in. And boy, do many fall easily that way. You know, be careful. Keep your mind straight on this word after having received his counsel. He has already conquered the world. It's going to be easy for you to make it through. Really easy. If you have that mind fixed, set for trust ye in the Lord forever. For the Lord, Yahweh, may I say it in the Hebrew tongue, is everlasting strength. How long is his strength just when I'm in trouble? Everlasting Every moment of the day, he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. As long as you seek that truth, that knowledge in the right way. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. You can read of that in Matthew 24, verse 3. You can read of it in Mark 13. Verses 1 and 2, where he said, there won't be one stone left standing in this city 
when I come back. They asked him, what is it going to be like when you come back? And in that 13th chapter of Mark, he gave all seven of the trumps. So you would know exactly how it was going down. I hope you've read it, all right? Verse 6. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor, and the steps of the needy. Seven, the way of the just. Do you know what this word is in the Hebrew? Just is the zadok, okay? And the um, God's elect, in other words, is up righteousness. I'll say that again. The way, that's mean, you can tell them because they're, they are just, they're up righteousness, thou... Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just. God takes care of the path of the just. All right. That means, what is it saying? Let's break it down to a little simpler English. If you do your best, and it may not be very good, at trying to please God and follow His way, He'll watch your path. That's His guarantee. Why couldn't He afford to do that when He's already conquered the world? It's written. And you know something? You may not realize it, but you're special to him. And I think deep down in your heart, somewhere you've known that since you were a little child, that you were special to Father. You were his child. And that he, if, if you were obedient, he would take care of you with, while you are doing his will, his way. All right? Can-do type people. Verse 8. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to thy remembrance, and to the remembrance of, of, uh, of thee. And so it is. How, how, how much time do you spend remembering him? What, what, what do you mean? Well, he describes his emotions in this word. He's very, he, his emotions are very important to him. Some make him cry. It's a shame. Some make him weep. It's a shame. Some make him feel as Satan said to Job in Job chapter 1. God was so proud of Job. He said, well, what do you think about my boy there? He, he is a dandy, Satan. Satan says, hey, you take down that wall by you conquering this world that you've placed around him or that he holds around him himself. If you'll take that away from him, I can have him. God said, he thought about old Job. He thought, there, there is no way he's going to be able to get Job even if I take down the guarantee that I've conquered the world and as long as he uses my name, that wall is there where Satan can't touch him. He said, I believe that boy won't let me down. So he removed the wall. And Satan lamb-blasted him. I mean, caused him miseries pretty soon. All of his kids were gone. There were boils on his body. I mean, he had ashes and what have you. There's lye and ashes trying to heal up those boils. And his dearly beloved wife said to him, Why don't you just turn up your feet and die? You're in such miserable shape. But Job said, no way. I will serve God. So you see, God has feelings. He knew Job wouldn't. Finally, in about the 38th chapter, after about 38 chapters of yakety, 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 good old buddies leading him, I mean, great spiritualist preachers, super teachers coming over and you are to do this. Job, you're as guilty as sin itself, or God wouldn't be allowing this for you. you know, finally, God comes along and said, Job, get up off that ground and act like a man. Gird yourself up. What does that mean? They wore dresses. Men wore dresses, believe it or not. And uh, much like Scotsmen wear kilts, okay? And you would pull the back of that baby up through there and tuck it in in your belt so your legs were free and you could be strong and be ready to fight, okay? And he told Job, you get up in there and start acting like a man. What are you listening to this bunch of freaks for? Beloved, that's why you need to stay in God's Word because there's a lot of freaks out there. They think they're really theologians. But then they were, they, they went to school 90 days. Yeah, 90 days in a seminary. Woo, that impresses a scholar, doesn't it? Woo, just can't hardly stand it. 
Be careful, my friend. You see, God gave you the gift of being able to discern and to read and to absorb for yourself. And wouldn't you a lot rather listen to God than you would this man or some other man when it comes right down to it? I mean, he's laying it on straight here. I might, through error, twist you down the wrong path sometime. That's why you need to study your father's word, the letter he has sent you. All right, verse 9, we'll leave this place. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Do you understand that's what it's about? We got some lost people out there. Christ came to the earth not for super preachers. Christ didn't come to this earth for theologians. He came to this earth for the lost. And that's what theologians, scholars, Christian people are supposed to have in mind. We're supposed to plant seeds to the lost so that they can find their way also. Well, let's go to the New Testament. John 16. Trace over to John 3.16 for a moment in the New Testament. Let's take this equivalent in the Greek. John chapter 16. And um, we're going to pick it up with about verse 21. Excuse me. And I want you to familiarize yourself with a word that means conquer in the Greek. It's usually translated overcome or victory. And it is nikao, nikao, okay, nikio. And it means to conquer. And it's important that you know that. Do you know why? It lets you know God has already got it done. Don't be like those, that generation that wouldn't enter that promised land with God saying it's okay. He's telling you today, I have overcome the world. You don't have anything to worry about. As long as you listen to me and practice what I teach as best you can. Verse 21 of uh, John 16. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow because her hour is come. Those old labor pains have just peaked out. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Meaning what? Let me just take a shortcut and catch you up. Troubles of this world may seem quite painful to you. But when the joy of his return, when that new city comes into sight, when that light we're looking at that might be a little far off is there, you're going to forget about all this stuff and think, boy, what a bunch of, that was so easy. And I know it doesn't seem that way now, but if you practice, exercise your mind in God's word, I assure you, there's a lot of things that you turn into a mountain that's nothing but a little old molehill, all right? When you handle it according to his word, all right? Got that? He said, you're going to be happy. The, the joy so outweighs and overrides the sorrow. 22. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Meaning he's going to be crucified and go to the Father. And your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. Don't ever let someone steal your joy. Okay? Well, you're a loser if you do. Let a mortal steal your joy? Come on. Just smile at them and walk on. It's that easy. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. In other words, if you need knowledge, information, need to know what to do, you ask it in his name. Now this doesn't mean he's going to frivolously allow you to, well, I need a new car. Well, are you going to use it in the ministry? Well, that isn't exactly what I had in mind. I wanted to ride. I wanted to show people what I look like in a new car. Do you think God's going to give it to you? Forget it. 
You know what he'll tell you? People work for cars, get started. That's what he'll say. What he's saying here, if you need something in your gift to have more wisdom to serve me, ask and it's yours. Hey, you're looking at an old boy that can document that for you. Anytime we've had to do the work, but God always furnishes the brick and we can get it done as a family, you betcha. So, okay, you can count on that. He means it. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. He wants you to be happy. Do you understand that? He didn't say so you can be sad. He wants you to be happy. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. You're going to see him. 26. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. 27. Why? For the Father himself loveth you. You got that? The conqueror loves you. Because you have loved me. Why? That's one of the steps, friend. Don't read over it. And have believed that I came out from God. You believe that I am Messiah. You believe that I am that king. I came forth from the Father and am coming to the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. What did, what did Almighty God say in the beginning? He said, let us make a man in our image. When you observe Christ, you observe God. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Got it? Born from above. 29. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. But by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. We're beginning to believe this. It's real strange what had to happen after that, though. 31. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? You know why he would ask that? 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that you shall be scattered. You're going to run like a bunch of rabbits. Every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Are you going to leave him? Hmm? When the false Messiah appears on this earth, are you going to leave the true Christ to feather your little old nest with, with the pretties that uh, the false Messiah brings and the promises? As it's written in that 13th chapter of Mark, it'll even turn mother against daughter because they truly believe it is the true Christ because of bad religion. 33, this is why we came here, sharpen up for me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Now, now, what was the reason for this? I've done this, told you about even some of these pretty rough things, but I want you to have peace. Peace of what? Peace of mind. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Hey, things are going to happen out there. But... Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Nikaiah, I beat it. I whipped it. You're in charge. You don't have anything to worry about. I have given you that authority. It's written in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I give you power over all your enemies. Then why are your enemies writing you down? Use the authority that he has given you to defeat them in a very wise way. You don't have anything to worry about. He wants you to have peace of mind. Why? Well, if you're a Christian, you represent him. He can't have some wimp representing him with no answers, no information, no knowledge. That's a Christian over there. Now, I'm not making fun of anybody or anything, but I'm, I'm, I know this is God's emotion. He wants you to be happy, and he wants you to listen to him, not some mortal, this one or any other one, without checking them out first in the 
Word of God. God has time and time again let you know that he overcame. Uh, uh, let's real quickly, let's turn over to the book of Revelations. We got time. Christ, when um, he talked with John, the revelator, that John that wrote down the revelation that Christ gave him. Do you know what the word revelation means in any language? It means the unveiling or to make something known. He wrote seven letters to seven churches. And do you know what? He kept footnotes after the letter of each church, a very special message. Have you read it? Okay. I mean, it is his promise to you concerning conquering so that you can be somebody he can be as proud of as he was old Joe. Okay. Well... Maybe not quite that proud, but at least you could make a stab at it, all right? Okay, in chapter 2 of the great book of Revelation, in verse 1, you'll note that he's writing this letter to the church of Ephesus. Skip down to the seventh verse, which is the footnote for that particular church. It reads, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh. Now it wasn't God that said he overcome here. This is that Greek word that means conquer. To him that conquers will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God, the very garden of God. That's his promise to you. And it doesn't necessarily go to all the people of Ephesus. It goes, the qualification is you that have ears to hear and eyes to see. Well, how do I know that? Well, if you kind of have a working knowledge of God's Word. You have eyes that can see His Word and understand it. Then he comes in and he writes a letter to the church of Smyrna. Now, Smyrna was one of the of two that only those two was Christ happy with. He couldn't, they had done no wrong. But all I'm going for is the footnote. You all know what happened. He said... You're the ones that know who those are that claim to be of our brother Judah, but are Kenites. And you know their lies. And I will uh, use you to bring them down. And then he says in the 11th verse concerning the letter to uh, Smyrna. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh, conquers, shall not be hurt of the second death. Man, you talk about standing tall, grazing on good pasture. Christ, the tree chief shepherd, has fixed some tall, uh, uh, delicious grass for you to graze upon. For he conquered. And all you have to do is follow. Keep your eye on the light in the distance. Uh, and you will overcome. Okay. Now, hey, here he writes church Pergamus. Okay. And you drop down, what's the footnote at the end of Pergamos? Verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, that means conquers. He didn't say, I'm going to do it for you. Do you understand that? He said, to you that conquer. I don't know, what kind of stuff you got, friend? What are you made out of? He did it for you. Have you claimed it? And do you, are you a can-do type person? I'm not trying to shame someone. And I'm not saying that you've got to be a bully to do it. But strength in faith is the power that gets it done. I said no mortal through strength or power or anything else can achieve the conquering it takes the divine will of God, His way, in His word to get it done. Okay? To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Do you know what that is, manna? It's food, angel's food. God's food. Your chief shepherd feeding you the real truth. And will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Do you know what's an interesting thing about this word stone? This word stone is the Greek word pebble 
for the same word count in the 18th chapter telling you how to count the number of the beast. All right? By enumerating using stones worn smooth over a long period of time. All right. Now, different lesson, different time. Verse 18. He starts the letter to the church of uh, Thyatira just to show you that he is evenly and well balanced. Where is the... Um, the footnote then follows in, and I'm having trouble picking it up here, 25, 26, 26, okay. And he that overcometh, there's that word conquers. Now he didn't say, I'm going to do it for you. He said, you that conquer and keepeth my works. Well, I thought all we had to do is hear words. I didn't think we had to do any works. Well, somebody has sure misled you, friend, and no wonder you're out in the cotton patch. Keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. That strength and power. Okay? And um, so let's go on into the next church, Church of Sardis in chapter 3. And... Uh, and we read there, and uh, concerning the church of, this was kind of a commercial place. And I think it's in verse 5, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. He that overcometh, he that um, Nikiah conquers, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. That's really something, beloved. That's something that everyone should work forward to. But you've got to conquer. You've got to overcome. And then he goes with the letter to the church of Philadelphia, which is the only other church that he found no fault in, because they also taught who the Kenites were that claimed to be of our brother Judah. And skip on with me, if you would, there to the 12th verse. He states that he'll even make you a pillar in his temple. But in the 12th verse, him that overcometh, him that conquers. There's no gender in that. It means men and women both and children. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go, on, go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. We got one more church. There are seven of them. God always does things by seven. Seven means spiritual completeness. It's to the church of the Laodiceans. And uh, we find then in verse 21, to him that overcometh, Will I grant to sit, listen to this, beloved. He that conquers will I allow to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. He did his part, can you do yours? And am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Do you have an ear? And do you hear? Do you know what? God loves conquerors. Well, I, I, I thought we were just supposed to be sweet little Christians. Whoever told you that? You are to be sweet, but you're supposed to be salty. He used that analogy for what? To let you know that when you walk into a room, he doesn't expect it to be the same flavor after you leave. What does salt do? It makes something salty. It means you make a difference. Your spirit in that room makes people feel good. Because everybody loves a winner. That's a winner in the right way. And when you practice and conquer, you are a winner. You're in his book. You, you are allowed to partake of the tree of life. What is the tree of life? Well, it's Christ. Just the opposite of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Satan. And he lets you sit with him. 
And the most beautiful promise to me is that manna. Do you know what the word manna means? It's kind of like a lot of us are in a way or have been in past times. Don't stay that way. Do you know what it really truly means in Hebrew? They were out in the wilderness. <laughs> Guys, we're going to starve to death out here. And about that time, it started raining from heaven, this beautiful bread. And they said, what's that? Well, that's what manna means. What's that? Okay. Well, what's that? I'll tell you what. It's his word. It's his truth. Open your eyes and see it. Absorb it. Love it. Live it. And be a conqueror. God loves someone that serves him with strength and to be strong as we opened this in the beginning in the book of Isaiah. To be strong in your faith means to not waver, but to know he has already done it for you. All you have to do is follow. Do we all follow the same path? No. Why do you think he made you just like you are? Your DNA is different than mine and everybody else's. Your, your mind thinks maybe a little different than everyone else. He has a purpose for you. He made you because he needed you and he loves you. He wants you to serve him. To, com to complete, turn with me to the book of Romans for which we've been teaching this week. I insist again that you remember the victory or the conquering cannot be done as long as you are just a mortal. Only divine power can bring it to pass. That means you're having God's help. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to pick it up in verse 36. As it is written. This is, you know, many people call this a great commission. Well, it's, it's a pretty good commission, but it takes the whole world, the whole word, all of it, to have the commission. I don't know, some people are so easy. Uh, well, I guess for a one verse Charlie, it's been to school for six months or 90 days. It might work, all right? Well, as, as you were, let's continue. Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long and we are accounted as sleep sheep for the slaughter. That's what a lot of people teach and it's quoted from 44. What did Paul say? Nay, ain't no way, no way. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Boy, hey, this nails it down. Do you, do you know um, what you, you have to put? Hoopa on the front of the word nika. Nika, oh, rather. You have to put hoopa. That's what it is. It means more than a conqueror. How about you? How does that kind of, don't let that intimidate you. You might be one of the frailest people in this room, but I guarantee you if you're wired in to the conqueror, just as he conquered, you must conquer. You may be the frailest little person in this room, but if you're wired into that power, I guarantee you the demons and the higher powers will run from you without stopping. He said, no way are you going to let somebody run over you like a bunch of sheep for the slaughter. You are hoopa. You know, that's a Greek word. It's almost like our super, okay? Hooper, super. Now, that's not what it, well, it kind of means that. Kind of, you know, it means much more than. I mean, that means a really go-getter. A can-do type people. I really shouldn't say go-getter. In Northwest Arkansas, that go-getter has kind of a different meaning. A go-getter in Arkansas is somebody that's got 20 acres that he makes his living off of, and it won't quite stretch, so he puts his wife to work, and at 4 o'clock he goes and gets her. Okay, That's a go-getter. He... What has that got to do with this? Well, it might have a lot. Be one of those that gets out there and gets it done, all right? Now, all right, don't, we're, we're not of that flock. We're more than conquerors. You want to make a point, you want to make a hit with God, then be a hoopa. And, um, and you'll get it done. You'll receive blessings, I guarantee you. 
There'll be a lot of people that might not like you. But I guarantee you one thing, God will, and that's where the rewards come from. All right? But the people will love you ultimately when they see the truth. 38, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels. I mean, we're, this is why the hoopah, you understand? We're talking about super power, uh, supernatural entities here. Angels or principalities, that means Satan himself. Nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Do you know why Paul can say this? Because God has already conquered, so it's not difficult for you to be more than a conqueror. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, anything that God has created, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, we go forth to conquer. To conquer what? The enemies of God. We work for him. You do in your daily life. Now that doesn't mean that you're supposed to go out and set the world on fire and all this. Be yourself. But be a strong self. Be strong in him. I mean when someone asks you do you believe, they don't have to ask. They can tell by looking at you, boy, there is not a doubter. That's not some wet noodle running along whichever way the water runs, it flows that way. There is a man, woman, or a child of God. So I just felt that we needed a little upper today because winter's coming on. Some of you may have tendencies for cabin fever. Be a conqueror. All right. It's a good time to spend a little more time with your father when the weather is a little bit bad, you know. Spend just a little bit more. Don't become a religious fanatic. He doesn't expect that. He just wants you to be a conqueror just like he was. Do you understand when I say just like he did? See, that's what he instructed you in that scripture. Is that he showed you the way. Do it like I did and you'll be all right. That's what he's saying. So, God will always bless you when you bless him. By loving him. Love begats love. How can you expect God to love you if you don't love him? He cannot love you if you do not have faith in him. If you are a doubter, he will shut you off. I mean, you broke the connection and you will be cold and alone. Otherwise, if you leave that connection of power and authority, I promise you as he has promised you, he will never Leave thee, nor forsake thee. And do you know what? His path, his protection, even as he swims through your enemies, I mean making mincemeat out of them, he with those same arms protects you and loves you. Why? You're his child. And he wants you to have peace. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for having conquered this world, for having made it so easy for us. Oh, Father, we know there's pitfalls, and sometimes we fall into them, but you're always there to help us out, Father, with strong faith. We ask that you touch everyone here. Let them be a blessing to all they come in contact with. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen.